I'm Nick Lesh, for those of you who, who don't know me, and my project is on uh, 5G use cases, hype versus reality. So 5G has been in, on mainstream media for, for quite a bit now and has, has garnered a lot of attention and a lot of hype. And uh, I've noticed through a lot of conversations I've had with folks in industries outside of telecom, but tangential in nature, many of them don't quite understand exactly how 5G will impact their business or what uh, the world will look like once, once 5G is here. So that was the inspiration for, for this project. It's uh, to kind of help you as future business leaders kind of navigate that process and help you guys have a better understanding of uh, how your business may be impacted by 5G. And I'm gonna do that by covering uh, three, three things. First, uh, I'll look through, I'll show you guys some of the, the media coverage and some of the industry executive commentary around 5G to kind of get you up to speed about what people are talking about. Then I'll run through what exactly 5G is and the, the use cases that, that have been talked about uh, as those that will be unlocked by 5G. And finally, I'll run through a couple of case studies on different use cases to hopefully help, help build some intuition around how to understand what's hype versus what's reality. So jumping right in. So these are some of the headlines around 5G and mainstream media from get ready, 5G is going to change everything to it will change the video game industry forever, unlock VR and AR. Uh, it's even the terrifying potential of, of the 5G network. And eventually the uh, media has become self-aware enough to understand that a lot of it ha has been more on the hype side, so uh, there's been some understanding of that as well. And then if you shift over to what executives across industries are, are talking about, you see the CTO of Walt Disney Studios saying that 5G is going to change everything about how media is produced and consumed to um, the CEO of Zynga making similar comments around video games. Uh, to even the CEO of the New York Times saying 5G can spark a revolution in visual journalism. Uh, the New York Times is even going so far as to opening up an innovation lab this summer to test out exactly how 5G can impact their business in terms of new ways to, to conduct journalism. And on the right here, I want to show mentions of 5G and 4G on earnings calls to show that it's not just a few select people. Overall, across public companies, uh, kind of interest of, of 5G has kind of taken off in, in recent years. So considering all of this, what, does, what is 5G and what, what does it mean for you? So I tried to take all the technical nuance and complexity around 5G to paint this uh, relatively simple picture of, of what it actually is. So 5G is the next generation of wireless connectivity technology that will offer greater speeds, lower latency, and more capacity. Uh, and this will come about in staged deployments targeting urban centers first, with blanket coverage likely not viable. So that's all it is. Not, not too terrifying, after all. Um, in, in terms of a little more detail uh, as to the difference uh, from 4G to 5G, on speeds, a roughly 10x increase over 4G. Similarly, for latency, about a 10x decrease to latency as low as one, uh, one millisecond. And then on the capacity side, roughly a 10x connection density increase over 4G. And the idea is that these new capabilities can unlock or improve use cases uh, that span industries. And one thing to note uh, as people think about all of this, uh, it's, it's important to remember that the focus is around wireless connectivity and not, and many of the use cases that people talk about can actually be addressed through wired connectivity because not everything is done in a mobile uh, mobile environment. If you recall earlier this week when uh, we hosted the CEO of Charter, he mentioned that even on uh, smartphones, 80% of media is consumed over his network, which is a fixed home broadband network, and, and media is consumed over Wi-Fi because people often consume a stationary space. So important to think through use cases is what's truly mobile versus what's often done in, uh, in a stationary space that can be addressed by Wi-Fi today already. So next, I, I uh, kind of scanned a lot of the media coverage as well as industry reports to pick out the commonly reported uh, use cases that, that people are saying will be unlocked or transformed through 5G. Running through them really quickly, this, these include autonomous vehicles, virtual reality, augmented reality, smart industry, fixed wireless, smart city, remote control of critical equipment, mobile gaming, and mobile media. Uh, I'll run through a couple of these in a little more detail to help you kind of build some intuition, as I said, around how to identify what's, what's real and what's hype in terms of the impact of 5G. 
First, I uh, wanted to talk about autonomous vehicles. So autonomous vehicles can guide themselves without human intervention using sensors and computation. And a lot of the, the media coverage around how 5G will unlock autonomous vehicles are centered around two components. One is that it'll allow for vehicle-to-cloud communications with greater speed and lower latency. Uh, and it'll also allow for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. Uh, again, greater speed, lower latency. While that's true, um, I've come to the conclusion that it, it, all in all, it's mostly hype. But autonomous vehicle development will not depend on 5G for, for a few reasons. One, as I said earlier, 5G will not offer universal coverage. So autonomous vehicles can never depend on vehicle-to-cloud communications for any type of deci critical decision-making. Uh, so, so that's, that's really not going to be a component of autonomous vehicle um, kind of computations. Uh, and second, uh, they can't depend on vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication because of coexistence with non-autonomous vehicles. Uh, and this is going to be due to long vehicle replacement cycles, typically 15 years on average. So the development of autonomous vehicles need to happen um, without kind of depending on this vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. And then finally, the final point here is that vehicles have enough physical space for all computation to be done locally. It's not the case where it's a, it's a mobile phone where it, Applications on a mobile phone can greatly benefit from computation done in the cloud. Cars are physically large enough where all of that computation decision making can happen locally. Uh, but I do say mostly that because there is one key way that 5G can interact with autonomous vehicles in a meaningful way, and that's uh, because they can support high levels of media consumptions for passengers within autonomous vehicles when they're in a state where they don't actually have to interact with the car. There could be numerous ways for uh, kind of new use cases for people sitting in a car to kind of consume media and 5G can and will support that. Um, also run through another one really quickly, virtual rea reality and augmented reality. So VR is computer generated simulation of a 3D environment uh, that an individual can interact with and augmented reality is similar but different. It's a com computer generated superimposition of images and data on a user's view of, uh, of the real world. And 5G's claim to be important because, again, it'll offer greater speeds and lower latency, which will allow for cloud computation as opposed to local computation. In terms of hyper-reality, <coughs> for VR, it's, it's mostly hype because <coughs> as a function of its closed operating atmosphere, uh, VR is largely a stationary activity, and existing fixed internet connections can match and exceed 5G's capabilities. So anything that People say can happen with uh, VR, but it just isn't happening today because 5G isn't here yet. It's, it's largely not true. Uh, there, there are potential other reasons why VR hasn't taken off, including uh, kind of expensive hardware and, and other gaps to, to, the, to the ecosystem. Um, however, on augmented reality, a lot of the, the coverage is, is mostly, or thinking around augmented reality is mostly real because uh, AR is largely a mobile activity, and computation requirements for identifying characteristics <coughs> of live imagery and creating live animation to uh, enhance the underlying images are, are pretty high, and, and considering it's done in a mobile environment, uh, kind of the accessibility of a better mobile network can uh, unlock potential new ways AR is, is used. Uh, so I created a, a very detailed kind of view of what's hype and what's reality for, for all the use cases, and I won't go through them uh, here, but just to, to kind of show how you can start applying it. I'll run through a couple, like smart industry, a lot of talk around that, but if you think about factories are, are largely, I mean, stationary in nature, there are very few use cases that are, that are truly mobile, so anything that can be done in a smart factory can, can theoretically be done today with a high-speed fixed internet connection and expansive Wi-Fi. Uh, for smart cities, for example, uh, smart cities include the broad use of sensors and connectivity to better manage city assets and resources. A lot of smart, smart city use cases don't actually require a lot of bandwidth, so it's something that, again, can be done with today's wireless networks. There are tangential kind of use cases within it that can benefit from greater connectivity. So that, that's kind of the type of thinking that you could use to look at your own industry or look at potential use, use cases that, that come up in your line of work to understand whether uh, they can be kind of impacted or unlocked by, by 5G. And in conclusion, two takeaways. So one, uh, I was just alluding to this, but when envisioning future use cases, it's helpful to apply the, the 5G capability criteria I laid out earlier around 
uh, <coughs> mobile, high speed, low latency, high capacity, non universal coverage to understand whether it can truly unlock something new. And then a final part of thought is that through all of this work, I, I've realized an appropriate analogy for 5G is the early days of the internet or, or of the mobile internet. Uh, there was plenty of talk of use cases, but nobody could quite predict what the domin dominant use cases ended up being. For example, in the 1990s, nobody quite envisioned Facebook, and as the mobile internet launched, nobody quite envisioned the form factor of the smartphone or, or the app store. So I think 5G is similar. There are a lot of talk of use cases today, but uh, I think that the really dominant ones down the line are, are things that people quite haven't envisioned and things that, that people will come up with as the entire ecosystem uh, evolves over time. So we should have an exciting decade ahead. And that's it.